So all across Hong Kong, over the past couple weeks, students have been striking. In 2007, China said that the governor would be elected by popular vote by 2017. But last month, at the end of last month, a committee of 1,200 citizens, 0.024% of Hong Kong, pick the candidates who Hong Kong then has the power to select among. A two-stage process with a filter at the first stage. And we can see it across the history of democracy in America. In the South, there was a general election. All citizens got to vote. But before that, there was a white primary where only whites got to vote. And you had to do very well in the white primary if you wanted to be able to run in the general election, a two-stage democracy with a biased filter in the first stage. This is Tweedism. Because what Boss Tweed said is, I don't care who does the electing as long as I get to do the nominating. In America today, we take it for granted. Campaigns have to be privately funded. So candidates for Congress and members of Congress spend anywhere between 30 and 70% of their time raising money to get back to Congress or to get their party back into power. And as they do this, they learn which buttons to push. And the fact is, the number of Americans who are relevant funders, who give at a level that makes it significant enough for anybody to care about what they think is about 0.05% of America. 0.05%, which means about 150,000 Americans, which the internet tells me is the same number of people as are named Lester in the United States. <laughs> and after the Supreme Court's decision in McCutcheon this year, that number is going to fall to no more than 35,000 which, as the internet tells me, is the same number of people as are named Sheldon in the United States. And after the DC Circuit's decision in Speech Now, which created the super PAC, the number of people who are indirectly affecting elections is now extraordinarily small. So in 2012, 60% of the super PAC money came from 132 Americans, which is about the number of Adolfs in America right now. So. <laughs> Whether it's Lester Lan or Sheldon City or Adolphia, the point is we've built a democracy where a tiny, tiny fraction of the 1% dominate this first stage. And the consequence of this is a democracy responsive to the funders only. The problem of the tiniest fraction of the 1% funding campaigns could be fixed through a simple statute that would change the way we fund elections by creating small dollar public funding of elections so that we spread out the number of funders. Just like the history of voting was to go from a tiny fraction of America who could vote to everyone who could vote, we can go from a tiny fraction who are effective funders of election to everybody who funds election, and Congress could do that tomorrow. And so what we said was, therefore, we need to get a Congress who will do it. We need to elect a Congress that would pass fundamental reform. What we're saying is we have one objective, to change the way campaigns are funded. I want to be the Grover Norquist of reform. So we want to elect candidates who have committed to passing fundamental reform. If we get a Congress, a majority, 218 in the House and 60 in the Senate committed to that, then we think we can pass that fundamental reform. It's not about electing 100 members of Congress. It's not about electing 200 uh, in the House. You know, it's literally, we've got to find 10 votes in the Senate, that's it. We can't go on anymore like this. As a democracy, we are not functioning. It's not because of Obama or because of John Boehner. It's because of this structure of fundraising that has morphed into this cancer that we've got to find the strength to stand up and do something about. Now I say that to focus on really what is the extraordinary part of the Hong Kong story. Because what's striking about those protests is it means those kids haven't given up. They actually believe there's something they can do to revive, to establish, to build a democracy. Our democracy has failed on our watch, which means we have failed our children. Even if you think it's impossible, what is your obligation as a citizen as a patriot, as someone who loves this country, what is your obligation? This is all about help us in this first stage to demonstrate it's possible so that the political pundits say, you know, in fact, Americans care about the corruption and we could actually win a Congress committed to reform. And if we could show that with real data, 
we could, in the strategic places we're fighting, do something to bring about this kind of reform. This is the moral question of our age. Can we reclaim a democracy?